Hey guys, welcome to lesson 13 of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. And in this lesson, we are going to take a look at the asset library in your Xcode project and how to add images into the project so that you can use them. So I've got some beautiful card images here. And let me just show some of them to you guys. Here's the queen. And there's a king. Now, I'm not the original creator of these images. I'll link and provide credit to the original author of these images below, but he released them under the Creative Commons license, so we're able to use them for our demo here. And I don't have all of the cards for each suit. I picked a couple from each suit just to make sure that we have ace all the way up to king. So we have, uh, what is that, 14 cards. So for the purpose of our war card game, I'm not going to use all 52 cards. Now before we add these images into our Xcode project for use, take a look at these file names. So I have, for example, I have the king card, which is right here. And then I have another one with an at 2x suffix. And then I have a third one with an at 3x suffix. Well. What are those? Let me just open them up and you can see. So the at 2x is literally just two times as large. And 3x is three times as large. And the reason that I have this is because we have a couple of different iPhones with different resolutions. So we have the original iPhones, which would use these ones. And we have the Retina iPhones, which would use the at 2x. And then now we have the iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, which at the larger screen sizes use the at 3x. The beautiful thing is that we don't have to manage which version to display. As long as we add all three versions and we name it according to this sort of nomenclature, so at 2x for the double the size and at 3x with three times the size, as long as we name it like that and we add all three versions to our Xcode project, the app is going to pick the appropriate version to display to the user, depending on what sort of screen resolution that they have. Although creating graphics is beyond the scope of this course, what you wanna do is create your graphic asset at the largest size. So whatever size you're thinking of, create it at three times the size, and then you wanna take that largest size and scale it down to create the other two. Otherwise, if you start with creating your graphic at this size and then you enlarge it to 2x and then you enlarge it to 3x, uh, the 2x and 3x versions won't look very good and it may actually be blurry because you're scaling the image up. So you actually want to work at this largest resolution and you wanna scale it down to produce your other two copies. In your graphics software, such as Photoshop or Sketch, where you're creating your art assets, you'll have the ability to scale it down and create these two versions manually. But actually, there's an app that can help you do that really easily. And it's called Prepo. It's available in the Mac App Store for free. So let me show you guys how it works. So here I have the App Store listing for Prepo. If you just open up Mac App Store on your computer and search for Prepo, you'll find this app. And it's again, it's free. And it's a handy little tool to help you create the at 2x and the 1x versions. So let me demonstrate how it works very quickly. This is what Prepo looks like. And I'm gonna go back to my uh, finder. For my king, I'm going to delete the at 2x and the 1x versions. Okay, so that just leaves me with this. Remember, you wanna create your artwork at the largest size, right? So when we create our art asset, we're gonna name it whatever at 3x. Okay, and then very simply, you just drag this guy and drop it into here. And then once you drag in all of the images that you want to convert or create uh, the smaller versions of, you just click export and you choose a location. So I'm just gonna choose this. And then if I go back to my finder, you'll see that it's created the at 2x version and the 1x version. So when you're working with a lot of art assets, this can be a real time saver. 
because you don't have to manually create the smaller versions in your graphics editing software. Instead, you can just drag all of them in here and then do a single export to create all of those different versions. Okay, so now let's go into our Xcode project and see how we can add the art assets into the project. Okay, so right here, I'm looking at the storyboard of our war card game Xcode project. And you'll notice in the file navigator that we have this entry called assets.xcassets. And here, uh, there's a single entry for your default project. Let me close this pane so there's a lot more to look at. And this is where you're going to add your app icons, but we're not going to do that right now. This is called your asset library, and this is where you're going to put all of the images for your app. And it helps you manage your different versions. So you can see that there's spaces for the 2x and the 3x versions. So what we want to do when we add an image asset, we're going to right click here, or if you have a single button mouse, you hold down control and click. And you can get this menu as well, and we'll hit new image set. Okay, and then you just want to highlight that. By default, it's going to name it image. And you can press enter to rename it, or you can just click it once and then wait for the text box to pop up. So I'm going to name this card one. Okay, and this is going to be my ace. So let, let me open up Finder again and grab my images. So you can see here in the image asset library, this is card one is the new image set that I created. And on the right hand side, there are three spots for each of the different resolutions that I need to add for this single image. So I'm going to go back to my finder, scroll down for my ace, and then I can drag the 3x into the 3x slot, and the 2x to the 2x slot, and then this one into the 1x. So just like that, whenever I want to use this image, I can refer to it by this name, card1. And it's going to use the appropriate size, depending on what type of screen the user is using my app on. Now here's a tip. If your file name is not going to be different from what you want to name your image set, you can actually just drag it on. So let me demonstrate. So for card two, I'm going to grab these three and then I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag it here. And just like that, it creates an entry based on the file name and it'll add all of the different resolutions based on your at 3x and your at 2x suffixes. Or alternatively, we can go like this again and create card three and you can come here, you can highlight all three resolutions and you can click and you can drag it here as well. It's going to be smart enough to add card3.png to the 1x, card3 at 2x.png to the, the second one, and the last one to the highest resolution. So it's not going to uh, switch it around and mess up your resolutions. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for cards 4 to 10. Just drag it into our image asset library. Okay, so now I've got 1 to 10. I want to add my jack, queen, and king as well, but I don't want to just drag it into my asset library because I actually want to name it. Well, I suppose we can name it afterwards. So let me just drag it on like that. And then I can rename my jack to card 11. And you'll see why I want to name it this way a little later card 13 because we're going to be randomizing a number from 1 to 13 and then referring to the card by the number instead of jack queen or king i have a couple more image assets here i have a background and i have a card backing so i'm going to drag these guys in here as well so this is just the card back and the green felt is the background we're going to use okay so now we actually have some great image assets for our app now let's take a look at how we can actually add these images to our uh, UI image views. So I'm going to go into our storyboard 
I'm going to open the inspector pane again because we're going to be modifying some of the properties. The first thing I'm going to do is click uh, the UI image view that's supposed to represent our background. So I have this guy highlighted so its properties are going to show up in the inspector pane on the right hand side. And I'm going to flip these tabs up here till I get to this tab where uh, you can set the image for this guy. And if you hit the drop down, you'll actually see all of our different image assets in here. So I'm going to select background, which is the green felt background. And you can instantly see that it set that image as the image for our UI image view. I'm going to do the same thing for the cards just as a demonstration, but uh, I'm going to remove it after because we actually, you know, we don't want the cards to be hard coded or rather we want the cards to dynamically change depending on uh, when we click the play around button, we want to randomize which cards to show. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose, let's say card 10 here. And let's say card 12. So you can see how easy it is to add images to your Xcode project and then set the images in your UI image views. But obviously we don't want to leave our app like this. So let's modify the button tap method to dynamically uh, change these images when the button is clicked. Okay, so let's go into our view controller dot swift file, because that's where the play round tapped method is located. And in this method, the code gets executed when the button is tapped. So right now, this line of code, we had set just to test things out, and it changes the button title to play round. So we don't want to do this anymore. Instead, we want to set the two UI image views to a different card. Actually, let's make things more interesting. Let's go back to here, and let's change these to the card backs. And then I'm going to save it, go back to viewcontroller.swift. And then in here, we want to manipulate those two UI image views and set the image property of them. How do we do that? Well, we exposed those two UI image views here as IB outlet properties, remember? So we can refer to these guys using these properties. So I'm going to say self.first card image view and Xcode auto completes it after I type a couple letters, I just have to press enter. So now this is referring to the UI image view object for the first card view, I'm going to press dot because I want to access one of the properties. And image is the property that I want to access. So let me step back for a second when I press dot, and I press I here, it goes to image, so that's the property name. But on the left hand side here, you can see that this is the type of object that this property needs or expects. So I know that it needs a UI image object. So what I'm going to do is create a new UI image object. And UI image is one of those UI kit classes. Okay. So I can do that very simply. Remember that in order to create a new object of a class, you just write class name and write these two brackets. So what happens when we create a new object? Well, the init method gets fired, right? Let's pull up the documentation for the UI image class. So here, I've got the UI kit framework reference, which I showed you guys in a previous lesson. And I told you guys we're going to use this a lot. So I'm going to search here for UI image and there it is. A UI image object is a high level way to display image data. So let me click into that class. And you can see here that it's got a special init method called well, it's called init, but it accepts one parameter called named. So let's click that. And let's see what that does. So it tells us that the method is init. And this is a parameter that is of type string. So we can pass in a string in here. And it returns a UI image object for us. So let's see the name parameter name of the file. 
Okay, the method looks for an image with a specified name in the application's main bundle. All of the images that we added into the asset library are in the application's main bundle. So all we need to do if we go back into our Xcode project is specify one of the names in here. Okay, so let's call that special initializer method. And if I just open up a bracket in here, uh, Xcode will instantly tell you, you know, what sorts of things are available. And here is the method that we're looking for. So I'm going to click that. And now we can just specify a name, let's say card one. Okay. And basically what's going to happen is a new UI image object is going to be created uh, using its custom special initializer method that accepts a string parameter. Uh, it's going to look for card one in the asset library, and it's going to basically create a UI image object that is initialized for this image asset. And it's going to assign that UI image object into the image property of our UI image view. Okay, so let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so here we see all of the image assets which we set in the storyboard. So when I click play, it's going to execute that code which will change the image that's set in this card. So you see it set it to card one when I clicked play. Because this is the line of code, see self.firstCardImageView is the IB outlet property which refers to this UI image object. Right, and the image property of that object is what we must set in order to change the image. So we did that in this line, and we're setting that image property to a new UI image object, which using this custom initializer method, we can pass in the name of an art asset to use. And so that's how that works. So let's do it with the second one. Self dot second card image view dot image equals UI image named, let's say card 11. I'm going to run it again. So I click play, both cards are going to get the image property updated. See? So the next step in the next lesson is going to just randomize it instead of setting it right now we're hard coding it to the ace and the jack. I just want to point out one thing is that when we're in the storyboard and we're changing the image for the UI image view through this inspector pane, you can see here this is the image property. We're just setting it visually here versus doing it through code and setting it here by passing it a new UI image object. The great thing is that by doing it through code, it kind of gives us the flexibility to dynamically uh, change the image if we want. Okay, so I'll see you in the next lesson where we learn about how to randomize a number and then set the corresponding image.